Hi everyone and welcome to Book Boop. My name is Rachel and today I've got my 80s hair down care and my uh, book nerd t-shirt and I'm ready to talk about my 2020 recap. I'm going to talk about the goals that I gave myself if I actually reach them and also some stats for my reading. I thought it would be fun because I like stats. I think it's a good time. So I've got my coffee here. I've got my trusty notebook. Let's go ahead and look at how I did in 2020. So I read a total of 104 books which is 34 1,587 pages. Dang. My average book length was about 332 pages. My average rating for books was 3.5 stars if you're going with the five-star Goodreads rating system. Um, my top age category that I read was YA, followed by adult and then middle grade, which I was kind of shocked about that. I actually read a lot more adult this last year, which was great because I wanted to get into some more adult books because I mainly would read YA and middle grade. So I'm glad that I actually got into some more adult and I was surprised how many more adult books I actually read, but I did still predominantly read YA, which wasn't really surprising to me. Um, my top genre that I read was actually fantasy with 40 of the books that I read being fantasy. After that, the closest one was paranormal, which again isn't surprising because I like to read anything that has to do with ghost and like creepiness and all that kind of stuff. So I have fantasy and then paranormal and then after that it breaks down into a whole bunch of different categories with just a couple different books here and there in those categories. So I mainly read fantasy. Um, four at four stars had the highest percentage of books. So most of the books that I read last year were four stars, followed by three stars, then two, then five. I started using the Copile rating system created by G over at Book Roast last year, and I really, really loved it. It's a spreadsheet that she creates where you actually put in a rating number from one to 10 for different categories um, for the acronym Copile. Let's see if I can remember them. I think it's characters, atmosphere, writing, plots, uh, intrigue. I can't remember what the L stood for and E was enjoyment. So you kind of go through all those and it averages out for you from the one to five star rating system and it helps you figure out kind of from different categories what your star rating is or should be or whatever and it's really hard to get five star rating <laughs> it's really hard you have to like super love it and give like nines or tens for each category to get to a five star rating so i didn't have as many five stars this past year which was interesting as well because i feel like i usually gave out more five stars but lots of four stars um for my goal recap i wanted to do monthly tbrs which i did this was the first time that i did monthly tbrs where i just read whatever i wanted i didn't have a specific theme like i did in 2019 which I enjoyed way more. I loved getting to pick just a range of different types of books each month. It was way more fun for me, but I really enjoy setting TBRs for myself because I work really, really well with setting goals. I'm a list person. I love checking things off a list. It makes me happy. And so doing the TBRs is perfect for me. Um, I had a book, uh, sorry, a goal of reading 70 books. And as you can tell, I surpassed that way more. I never thought in my whole life I would ever read 100 books in a year, let alone reach 104 books. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with lockdown and quarantine and things like that. I ended up having a lot more time to read than normal. But I did end up setting myself for 100 books again in 2021 as a goal because at least now I know I can reach it. I want to see if I can hit it again because I think it'd be really, really cool. I have so many books that I want to read and I, I would like to see myself get through a lot of books so that I can get to more and more of the books that I would like to read in my lifetime because I think that would be really, really cool. Um, I wanted to do more vlogging. I can't say I necessarily did a lot of vlogging. I think I did like maybe three or four or five vlogs max. I don't know. I don't do any editing with my videos. So vlogging is not something I do very often because my husband is the one that ends up editing them and he doesn't mind doing it, but I just, it's time consuming. We have a kid and I just don't feel like I have the time to dedicate or he has the time to dedicate to, for me to vlog consistently. So I started doing mini vlogs towards the end of 2020 and I would like to do more of those because they're really easy and they don't take any editing. I just sit in front of the camera and tell you about how my week's been, how my reading's been, all that. But again, 
again, it's just finding the time to do it, finding the time to sit down and take the time um, to do that. So I would like to do more mini vlogs and more vlogging this year, but I at least did some vlogs in 2020, just not to the extent I would have liked to. Um, I was hoping to hit 500 subscribers in 2020, which I did. I hit 500 pretty close to the end of the year, so I just barely met that mark. I have no control over that at all, so I was shocked and excited to see that I actually reached 500 subs, and I've been able to maintain that so far. <laughs> we'll see how that goes, if it continues to go up, but either way, I'm just excited. Whoever's here is here, and I'm just excited to talk about books with you all and get to you all, know you all more. Uh, I was hoping to do some readathons for the first time, which I participated in three readathons. I participated in the Owls readathon, the Newts readathon, which were both created by G at Book Row. She doesn't do those readathons anymore. That was the last time she was going to do it. So I was able, glad I was able to jump in and do that before those were going to come to the to an end. I also did a journey through, I think it was Adventure or Journey Through Wonderland, which was a middle grade um, readathon and that one was really really fun and I had a blast doing that too. Um, I do struggle with readathons a little bit because I, I find that I don't really like to have to stick with specific like stick with specific prompts to pick specific books. It's fun to kind of pick them out but sometimes those books aren't ones that I really feel like reading. So I like being able to just pick whatever I want to read. Even if I create a TBR for myself, it's still a TBR that I'm interested in reading. So readathons can be a little difficult for me sometimes because they can kind of push me to read things that I really not in the mood to read. So I can't say I love doing readathons, but I'm glad I did some of them because I'd never done any before. So it was a really cool experience. I wanted to do a bullet reading journal, which I did do all last year, and I started this one for this year. I love doing it. I don't do anything super fancy. I like kind of clean looking bullet journal because I'm not really artsy, but I did add some new spreads for 2021 that I'm very excited about. Maybe I can show you all those at some point. They're not terribly original, but some spreads that I think that are going to be really, really fun to fill out during the year. But if you have not ever kept a bullet journal or just a reading journal in general, I highly recommend it. I love it. I love getting to keep track of my TBRs, to have somewhere to write down my thoughts about books as I read them so that I can always look back and see what I thought about a book or what my star rating was, that kind of thing. It's just a lot of fun to kind of use it to keep track of how my reading's going throughout the year and be able to have a log of that and to be able to look back and see what I read within a year and what I thought about each book. It's just a really cool way to document everything and I highly recommend it. Um, on some non-reading regular things, um, I was hoping to do regular exercise, specifically yoga is what I wrote down. I only did yoga for the first like two or three months <laughs> of the year. And then I ended up moving back to a different type of workout that I usually do is like these walk it, walk at home workout things um, that I really enjoy. And now I've been working out with my husband. My husband's into weight training and those kind of things because I wasn't seeing the bodily change that I wanted to see. So I started working out with my husband and I've been doing that ever since and it's really challenging me. I'm starting to do hit cardio, which is challenging and I hate it so much, but I'm doing it. I'm actually trying to see if I can lose a little bit of weight this year because I've gained a little bit and I would like to lose some and get a little bit more fit. So I'm currently on a diet. Pray for me. I hate being on diets. All right, and then lastly, I wanted to read through the entire Bible in 2020. I had a reading plan for that, and I was doing that along with the church staff that I work with, and my husband was doing it as well, and I successfully was able to read through all of the Bible for the second year in a row, and I was really, really excited to finish that. I didn't end up finishing it before the end of the year. I just finished it this past week, so I was a little behind over the holidays, but I finished it. Um, still need to kind of figure out what I'm going to be doing Bible study-wise for 2021. I have some ideas, but not a whole lot, but I pretty much hit all of my goals that I had for 2020. None of them were crazy or lofty or terribly interesting goals, but I'm excited to see that I surpassed my reading goal. Um, I was able to hit my sub goal by some miracle, um, and it was really fun to see the fact that I actually can read 100 books in a year. That's pretty crazy. Bless you, Moon Moon. My poor puppy dog just sneezed. Hi, bud. And he just brought me his ball. <laughs> He wants me to play with them really bad. Okay, so those are all my stats. That's my goal recap. I don't know if this was interesting to you. I hope it was. I find this stuff kind of interesting. Let me know down below how many books you reached, how many books you read in 2020, and what your original goal was if you had one. Like, did you surpass your goal? Did you find yourself reading more in 2020 or less? Some people, they had trouble reading more in 2020 because they just felt really, really stressed, which 
totally understandable. Pretty much everybody has been really stressed and some people, they're not able to read in those situations. So some people read less. So I'm curious to know if you feel like you read more or less. Did you hit your goal? What goals did you hit? Maybe if there's a goal you didn't hit, just let me down below. I just want to chat with you about it. I think it's really fun to see how we do within a year, what we hope to do, and then what actually happens. It's always interesting to see that. So let me down below. I would love to chat with you. On this side of the video over here is my logo. If you click on that, you can subscribe to my channel and follow me on my book journey. I would love for you to subscribe and have a chance to get to know you more. That would be really awesome. On this side of the video over here is a suggestion for another video. If you want to watch another one of my videos right now, but thank you so much for watching. You rock. And don't forget to keep reading. Bye.